Hi guys, welcome back to Tierra Latrice. On this channel, I just wanna inspire women to want to know the, the Jesus of the Bible more. Today we're gonna to talk about the term Imago Day. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. If you have already been here and you're a subscriber, welcome back. Okay, I think the best way to start this video off is it really to kind of talk about what does the image of God mean and see how God describes it biblically. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis chapter one. So this is, as we all know, when God is creating the universe, the earth and the inhabitants of the earth, we get to day six when he actually creates mankind. Now, this was a lot different than when he created all his other creation. Now the other creation and inhabitants of the sky and the, and the land and the uh, water were all good. But for some reason he decided to do a little something different. And that was with you and me. So he decided to create mankind in his likeness and image. So uh, Genesis chapter one, verses 26 through 31 talks about how God had desired to create someone in his image and he also told these image bearers how to operate as image bearers so you'll see as we go further in uh genesis and into genesis 2 where he is literally given instructions on how uh mankind i.e <laughs> Adam and Eve uh, are supposed to operate and he tells them to one rule and subdue and fill the earth. Now, again, this is so different than with all the other creation because in them being image bearers, he gives them a sense of authority, power, and um, allows them to rule. And we see examples of Adam being able to rule by he is given authority to name every animal that God had brought to him. He even named the woman that God created for him. And so we see there is a, there is a distinct type of relationship and correlation between God and humanity that does not exist in anywhere else in his creation. And so this is so important to think about when you see that he says the likeness and how the how Genesis kind of goes as far as like the direction of likeness and image is really in God's ultimate authority and his power and his creativeness. He distills this in um uh, mankind and allows them to operate in certain attributes that only he as God operates in. So even with the, the commanding them and instructing them to rule and to subdue and to multiply are all attributes of God. And again, this is directly and specifically, uh, a part of what he, the purpose that he wants for mankind to do. So as we are re, as we are reproducing, as he uh, specified in Genesis chapter one to to fill the earth, essentially you they were um, and commanded or instructed to fill the earth with other image bearers. So ultimately, it would have just been a whole garden that would have been more expansive, that would have included a lot more people um, that were image bearers that looked, that operated, that ruled like God did. Now, we know something went wrong with this image bearer because we can look in our society today, we can look in ourselves and see that we do not reflect God perfectly. And so now we're going to get into the part where loving and understanding that everyone around us are image bearers as well. All right, so now we're going to get into Genesis 3. So Genesis 3 introduces the fall. So this is when the serpent comes in and deceives Adam and Eve to rebel against God. One of the first instructions and commandments that God had gave Adam uh, was to not eat from eat or even touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So in their rebellion, they ate of that fruit and what that caused was for now mankind to have the wisdom to have the wisdom and choice to decide what was good and what was evil and they ruled according to what their wisdom and understanding was and as we see again in our society we don't always know what's right sometimes we can know what's right and choose not and choose not to do what is right we can be selfish and inconsiderate and so now that sin has entered into this narrative of of pointing uh to the messiah it has corrupted 
our image. It has corrupted our ability to accurately uh, and perfectly uh, be image bearers of, of God, right? And so now we get to people. Understanding that now sin comes into play when it comes to being image bearers. Sometimes we make great decisions. Sometimes even when you look at the different inventions that like airplanes and boats and all of these type of things that we're like, it's so amazing, is evidence of being image bearers. And so when you think about people around you, believer, unbeliever, black, white, it does not matter what. All of the human race has a certain dignity and honor and glory simply because they are in the image of God and they have different attributes and abilities that God has bestowed on us as image bearers that they can function in that nothing else in creation can do. And so because of that, that should uh, make us sit and think, okay, well, God's ultimate commandment is to love him and to love them, meaning everyone else around us. So why are we called to love other people? Why is that the, the second greatest commandment, right? And when you look back at it, James even talks about it, how because we are image bearers, that's where that's why racism and any form of injustice or prejudice is so 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 wicked and so so ungodly because that is a human being placing another human being in some sort of scaling that makes them lower or inferior. Where in all people, in all na nationalities, in all languages, in all tongues, all groups deserve a specific and a distinct honor simply from the basis of them being in the image of God and as believers this should impact the way that we do life with people the way that we communicate with people the way that we handle people their emotions their feelings um, their livelihood like everything all of those things should matter to us solely off of the basis that the people that we are interacting with this world are fellow image bearers right and then and then, and then when you think about I'm so, so upset it but even when you think about how uh David in Psalms 8 5 talks about how he made us a little bit lower than angels and he has bestowed upon us the crown of glory and honor that is exuded all around us so one thing I don't want us to do is try to discredit uh respecting and honoring our fellow mankind simply because we are imperfect or other people present imperfections they are and we are perfectly flawed right but we are still in the image of god and that goes to the next part that i want to talk about is we know now how god and why god bestowed upon us his image and how and what his instructions on Adam and mankind were to do and we see how sometimes that can be kind of difficult because sin entered the picture and now we don't know how to accurately reflect um God perfectly and in, and do the due justice of our responsibilities as image bearers but what does that mean regarding us so personally one of the biggest things that comes to me when it comes to image bearer regarding Tierra is my value Oftentimes, especially in, in the social media age, we can find our value and our, our identity in the things we have, the things we're able to do, our ambitions, our lust, our uh, perception of what is beauty, what is not beauty. But the beautiful thing that I have learned and I'm finding so much uh, richness is, is my identity is completely rooted in the fact that I'm an image bearer. But one thing I would want to charge you and re even remind myself of is the only way our identity can be rooted and firm and not falter and sway based off of the world systems and culture is that we must know who God is. So it's so important to investigate, to dig, to love, to be intimate with this God because it's in knowing who he is that we know who we are and that we can settle in our identity and operate and flow through the spirit to be able to be image bearers that when other people see us and other people see our lives and the fruits of the spirit that God allows us to exhibit to show his glory they will wonder what it is about us and we will have an answer for our hope we will have an answer for our faith right 
image bearing is so important to understand your identity is rooted in the fact that you are an image bearer so me my value your value set you are valuable not because you're a mother not because you're a wife not because you are a sister a brother a husband not because of any of the roles that you exhibit on this earth you are value off of the basis that you have been made in the image of god not a lowercase g, a uppercase g. We're talking about the God of the universe that, that holds all power and authority. The great I am, the alpha and the omega. We're not talking about like some little wimpy God. We're talking about the God of the universe that no power exists outside of his power. That is who we are in the image of. And unfortunately, because of sin and the rebellion of Adam and Eve and sin entering into the entering into uh, the story um we now have issues wrestling with our flesh wrestling with the the spirit spirits and principalities of this world that want to conform us further into the image of sin and flesh and worldliness but there was a solution already planned from the beginning of time so with all that i just talked about regarding imago day it all points to one person, Jesus Christ. Now, as I just talked about in Genesis chapter three, when Adam and Eve rebelled against God and they ate from the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam failed. Adam failed at what his purpose was and what his responsibilities were that God gave him in Genesis chapter one and chapter two. He was not able to fulfill his, uh, his, his opera, not just his opportunity, but his purpose of being an image bearer and, and flowing and being in the presence of God freely. So because of that, the second Adam was promised all throughout the old Testament, all the prophets, pointing to this messiah this messiah that would come and he would bear the image of god but he would be different than the first adam he would bear the image of god perfectly he would be an example that that uh adam and even moses could not do he would come in a form of a man which is our lord jesus christ he will come in a form of man he will walk and be tempted and and beaten them amongst of a worldly system and he would never sin he will never take that temptation that the enemy presented to adam he would not he submitted completely to god and he lived a life perfectly on this earth and he literally according to philippians was the image of god and so this was the second opportunity for us to get things right. And thank God he sent himself down to do it because no one else could do it. So when Jesus went upon that cross, he took upon the sins of the world. So between, um, from Genesis all the way to the end of the, um, to, to the, to the resurrection, literally those sins and then the sins that would come in our age, Jesus took upon those sins because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. He bore them. He died for them because the only way to remove, the only way to satisfy the wrath of God was for him to pour out his wrath. And that was on Jesus. And when Jesus paid that price and he died and he resurrected, he had now, he has now given us the ability to operate by his spirit and be image bearers. Now, again, because we are in this world and we're in our flesh, we fall daily. But those who have accepted Jesus Christ and are filled with his spirit his, by saving faith and justification, we now have the opportunity to literally walk and move and live and breathe according to the original purpose of our identity and our identity being re rooted in the fact that we are image bearers. And so just to encourage you <laughs> when you may feel like, you know, this image bearer thing is, you know, I'm, I'm not really doing a good job at it. I pray that you pray and you just learn and you, you interact and you, uh, dig deep into your relationship with God. And in that intimacy through sanctification, we are constantly being conformed into the image and one glorious, glorious 
day he will come back but he will not come back like he came the first time for the forgiveness of sin this time he will come back as judge and as jury <laughs> he will come back to deliver his people and then that day guys we will be able to be in his presence existing as image bearers as we were always intended to be so I hope this uh, video was helpful to you guys. I so encourage you to just study uh, the genesis of our faith and uh, just like, dig deep into God. If you want to know who you are, know who God is. And I pray that this will be a blessing to you. And I hope to see you next Wednesday.